Interview with a Spartan by Walter Hazen. I was not surprised to find Zathos in perfect health. Even at the age of 60, his body was trim and his muscles as firm as ropes. And why shouldn't they be? He had spent his entire life in the army. He had trained hard, he had fought hard, and he had lived a life free of all luxuries. He had not been retired long enough for his body to grow soft and lazy. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alexandros, and I have come to Zathos's farm outside the city of Sparta to talk to him about his life in the army. At first, he didn't want to answer my questions. He told me that Spartan soldiers were expected to remain silent at all times. They were only to speak when spoken to, and then the remarks had to be brief. He finally opened up when I reminded him that he was no longer in the army. Page 108. Where do you want to begin, he asked. Start when you were seven and you left home to begin your army training, I answered. Zathos sighed and began his story. He said that his leaving home meant that his parents had no children in the house. His baby sister, Cassandra, had been taken away by soldiers shortly after she was born. Like all Spartan babies who are not in perfect health, she was taken to the mountains and left to die. His older brother, Priamus, had been killed several years earlier fighting the Persians at the Battle of Thermopylae. His parents accepted such sad things. They were natural. Was your mother proud of Priamus? I asked. Of course, he replied. He seemed surprised by my question. I remember mother telling him to come back either, either with his shield or on it. She was proud that he died a brave soldier. She was even more proud that he died fighting alongside King Leonidas. Page 109. Suppose your little sister, Cassandra, had been allowed to live, I continued. What would have been expected of her? Again, Zatho seemed surprised that I would ask, what was to him such a silly question? Why, she would have participated in outdoor games and kept herself physically fit. Then she would have married and had lots of babies for the glory of Sparta. Zathos continued his story. After being taken from his home, he lived in army housing with others. There he was assigned to a group of boys. Each group was led by, by an older and stronger boy referred to as captain. Captains were very strict, strict and took special delight in making life miserable for those in their charge. We were punched, kicked, and publicly whipped, Zathos explained, and one dared not whine or complain. To show evidence of pain only brought more punishment. From the start, Zathos was given only enough food to stay alive. Part of his training was to learn to steal food. Stealing was permitted and encouraged, but if a boy was caught, he was severely punished. I heard of one boy, Zathos continued, who was so hungry he stole a fox to eat. A trainer came upon him with the fox. To avoid being caught, the boy hid the animal under his cloak. While he was being questioned by the trainer, he kept the fox hidden away. He never made a sound or cried out as the fox scratched and gnawed at his side. Finally, he collapsed and died, or at least that's the way the story went. Zatho said that the starvation diet helped teach him discipline and toughness. The clothing he wore did the same. Both summer and winter, he was allowed only a simple cloak. He wore no shoes, going barefoot, and even the worst of weather. At night, he slept in his cloak on a hard bed made of the stems of plants. Good old Lysurgus, Zatho said, smiling. He certainly made things hard for me. I agreed. Lysurgus had drawn up the laws that controlled everything about Spartan life. His laws turned Sparta into a military dictatorship. He had no use whatever for democracy. Zathos continued his story. He said that he was in training for about 12 years. When he was 20, he became a soldier and he remained a soldier until the age of 60. He was allowed to marry when he was 20, but he had to continue living with old other soldiers until he was 30. After that, he could live at home with his wife. Even then, he continued to eat his, aunt, his meals with his fellow soldiers at an army mess hall. How are the meals in the mess hall? I asked him. Nothing to rave about, he replied, again smiling. 
mostly black broth and bread, maybe a little wine. Once a week, ordinary citizens ate in a similar dining hall. The reason for this was to keep them tough too. If you weren't tough in Sparta, you didn't make it. Page 112. Oh, I'll tell you how bad the food was at those public dining halls. A visitor who had eaten at one was supposed to have said afterward, now, I know why the Spartans do not fear death. I think that just about sums it up. When Zathos told me that the citizens had to su supply part of what they ate at the dining hall, I naturally wondered what happened if they could not come up with their share. Why, they lost all their rights as citizens, he said. Once again, surprised that I would ask a question whose answer to him was quite obvious. I concluded my interview with Zathos when I asked him about his battlefield experiences. Having been too young for, per for the Persian Wars, he said that the most of his fighting was confined to putting down revolts of the helots. But from that, he wore battle scars of which he was very proud. Zathos excused himself, saying it was time for his morning exercise. Even at his age, he was determined to remain fit and trim as long as possible. Once a Spartan, always a Spartan.